What's going on guys? Welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So today I actually have one of the most interesting products that I got a chance to review and actually the one that I'm probably the most excited for on this entire channel, even more so than the PS Vita reviews I did on the Xbox One X. And this is actually just a product that you use with your controller to give you a competitive edge when you're playing first person shooter type games. So I bet most of you guys who play Call of Duty or play any kind of first person shooter really on consoles have definitely come across or heard of scuff gaming controllers. You can pick these up at GameStop and I think the cheapest one you could get is about 150 bucks I'd like to say somewhere around there and as you customize the controller add a whole bunch of different things you can actually take the price up all the way to 250 bucks. Now granted there's a lot of customization you get to change buttons, colors, the height of different joysticks, the triggers, all that kind of stuff. The main thing that people really go for are the shoulder buttons and the stuff that you can put on the back of the controller like around here, just like Microsoft Xbox's Elite controller would be the best way I could explain it. So Sony hasn't really come out with an official Elite controller yet that I saw. I saw a couple of the licensed products out there by other brands, but they never really did the job quite well. However, that's kind of changed and it comes at an extremely affordable price. So I want to introduce to you guys Extreme Rate's Dawn Remap replacement chipset that you use with an existing controller. This thing is a beast for the price. It's not going to beat scuff controllers just because scuff again it's taking an entire controller customizing it and charging you an arm and a leg frankly you know this is something i've always wanted to do because i play call of duty a lot and i used to hate when someone would just be double jumping in front of me all the time and had perfect aim because their hands never came off the joysticks to press x to jump it would always be some kind of button on the back now with this kit you can do the same thing you can put buttons on the back as you guys see here and you can program these to be any one that you want so in this video, I'm gonna give you guys my review on this actual product. I'm gonna show you the entire process of how to install it. There's an existing video out there from Extreme Rate. I actually used that to build it myself and it was very helpful, but there are a few pointers that I wanted to add while explaining this to you guys, because it is a little bit complicated, not really. I, I would say the overall time it should take you to do this is less than 30 minutes if you really wanna get this done. Follow this tutorial and you should have no problems whatsoever. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Anyways, let's get started with moving on to the install portion of this and I will show you guys what's cool about it, how it works, what the different functionalities are, and even how you can program the different buttons. So let's take a look at that coming up. All right guys, let's jump into the install tutorial. So what you're gonna need first is a DualShock 4 controller that's compatible with this actual kit. Um, as I explained before, and even in the description for this product, you need to have one that has the light bar at the front of the screen. So when you press this, you should see that glowing in the front. Um, they've specified the specific models for it. It's JDM 050 and JDM 040, I believe. Those are the only ones that this kit is actually compatible with. So if you have a non touch bar model in the front, it's not gonna work with that, just for reference. So let's go ahead and dig in this. Let's go ahead and open what we get in the box. First things first, we have actual controller faceplate. Now the one that Extreme Rate sent me over, they gave me a color choice. I picked out the carbon one. I just thought that looked the nicest, but that's actually what it looks like. Um, and the finish is not bad. It doesn't look like it's very cheaply made. You can tell this is made in a plastic mold. Um, overall, nothing too bad there. Here we have the remap board along with the ribbon cable that's gonna connect to your DualShock. If I can open this with my fat fingers. Ooh, there we go. That's a lot of stuff that came out. So a bunch of screws are in here. You've got your button covers. So we're gonna set the button covers aside right now and we're gonna focus on just the main things that we're gonna need right away to start the install. So let's get the buttons away. And here is actually the logic board or what they call their logic board, their remap board that you're gonna be using. This is it. Yep. So you can see it's already pre-soldered. You don't have to do soldering. So another misconception people have is that you have to do soldering on this. You don't if you don't want to. You, if you don't want to use the touchpad as a remappable button, like remap one of the back buttons to the touchpad or to L3 and R3, you don't need to do any soldering whatsoever. So anyways, here's what you get in the first little bag. Um, trying to make this as detailed as possible, so bear with me, this video will be a little bit longer than normal. You've got a bunch of screws to tighten everything down and fit the faceplate. And this is that ribbon cable I was talking about that's gonna connect 
to your main board. So this is gonna go inside here like this, and this guy is gonna go onto the actual board. And I'll get close up in so that you guys can see everything as I do it. This is just kind of an, a small, quick unboxing. All right, in the second bag, we have a couple other things. So we've got a spudging tool or what they call it. It's basically to help break open the PS4 controller when you unloosen the screws. You've got a small Phillips head screwdriver that you're gonna need to take off the screws. And all of this stuff is just duplicates and extras. The extra wires and stuff, I don't actually anticipate myself using any of this unless something goes wrong during the install. So let's jump into it. We're gonna start by opening up the controller back end first, and then I'll show you guys the exact process through and through. Okay, so here are the tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need a pair of scissors, a small Phillips screwdriver, which comes included inside the kit, a spudgy tool, which comes inside the kit as well. You'll need some double-sided 3M tape, although you can use the one that they included. I already had some lying around, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Again, this is not necessary because it comes in there, but if you have some extra, go ahead and use that. And last but not least, what you're gonna need is something to crimp off the transistors. So, or the legs of it actually. But anyways, so let's, now we got our tools out and ready. Let's go ahead and start with prepping the board first, even before we open up the controller. So, we're gonna take this, and the first thing we're gonna wanna do is you see these little legs here? These little legs here, this is what you wanna clip off. So as you can see, they come off really, really easily. You wanna be careful not to pull it or break anything by doing this. They should just come off clean like that. And it's okay if you have a little bit left over just like that, but you wanna go ahead and repeat the same process for all four of the buttons that don't have any wires attached to them. So we got our legs off of this. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, cause I don't need, again, L3 and R3, and we're not doing any soldering, these buttons here, these wires here, these two, let's separate these out. These two wires, the blue and red, they're not connected to anything. And you could see that even on the board, it says, see that L3 and R3? Blue is going to L3 and red is going to R3. This I'm gonna get rid of because I'm not using it. So it says that you can just cut off those wires and I cut them off. So they're gone. So now I have a completely neat board ready to go into this controller when I have that opened up. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside now. Now it's time to disassemble the actual PS4 controller. So you've got one, two, three, four Phillips head screws. Let's go ahead and take those off with the Phillips head screwdriver and open up the back plate. Now we've got the screws off. We're gonna go ahead and pop off the back. Now here's where you can use this tool. See, that's what you use that for. All right, and as you can see, this was a little cable connector that was connected here on this guy here. When you pull that out, it'll sometimes come out on its own, but you gotta be a little bit gentle. So now here we have the back plate of the controller that just came off, and we have the actual board of the DualShock 4 that we're gonna go ahead and edit. Now first things, again, what you wanna do is you wanna take off the battery. You don't want any power going to it, so just disconnect that, pull that around, set the battery aside. Now you've got one screw here that's gonna take off this plastic cover. You've got this screwdriver here, or screw, we wanna take this off. As you take that off, it's gonna let this guy come out, put that aside, and now you should actually be able to just grab the board without damaging it and flip it around. So the other thing that you wanna make sure you take off is this guy here, this ribbon cable. So you just wanna pull this out like that, and then this should release. This should not be sticking like that. Should kind of just come out like that. So here we have our DualShock 4 completely disseminated. I'm gonna flip this around like that. Now I'm leaving this in here intentionally so the touchpad doesn't come out, but you can go ahead and take that off if you want. 
Now what we want to do is we want to get this board out and flip it around. You want to take off the DualShock caps. So these are the inner workings of a DualShock 4. It's pretty interesting how that looks, doesn't it? There's your joysticks, all your stuff that goes with it. And here are the rumble motors actually. These things spin and give you the vibration sensation. Interesting how the left one has more weights on it than the right. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take this board off of here. And to do that, we just pull on it slightly while making sure we're not gonna destroy anything. So just like that, you're gonna pull up the board and flip it over like this. Okay. So you could see that this board is JDM055. This is the kind of board that we wanna use. Let me zoom in there so you guys can actually read that. But right here, it says JDM055. Okay, now here is where the ribbon cable is gonna actually attach, and this is the spot where you're gonna to wanna to use some sticky paper or some double-sided tape. When you put this like this, this little gold tip here is what you would solder to this guy if you were gonna be doing a touchpad control, which we're not, or touchpad remap. That's where you would block like that. So what you don't wanna do is that when you're soldering, but you wanna make sure that this is lined up. That's how it's basically gonna sit flush. It's supposed to sit like that. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit of tape over there. So I got, I've gone ahead and applied double-sided tape over there. You guys can see it's exposed. And now what we're gonna do is line up the ribbon cable. Again, make sure that the part that could be soldered is close to the touchpad button and line up the holes like this before you press down. So you wanna make sure that the holes are lined up on both sides and then you can go ahead and press down on it. And that's just to keep it in place. So it should look like this by the time you're done. That's what it should look like when it is connected. So you can see this is perfectly flush. Now we can go ahead and flip this back around. If you want, you can put a little bit more tape here to give it some more extra security. In fact, I'm probably gonna go ahead and do that just so it stays more firm on there. So once you've installed the ribbon cable and you put this back in, you'll see that these little plastic things right here, these little bars should pop up above the board. So I'll point at it really easy that we can see this guy here and this guy here. They should be, there's holes inside the board that lets you slide that up. So that's how you pretty much get this together. All right, so the next step is we wanna reconnect our DualShock buttons. Again, just push them into the hole. They only go in one way. When you press it, you should hear it click the right way. Again, same thing here. So we've got that lined up. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this ribbon cable into the actual remap board. Just slide it in. You'll feel it get snug and you're just gonna close on it like that. Remember, never apply too much pressure on these type of brackets because they break super easy. And trust me, when you break one like this, you're pretty much done. So that's how you connect this together. Okay, so now that we have this ready, and this is a little bit different than the way the tutorial explained it, but, or their tutorial explained it, I went ahead and got the front shell ready. And all I did was just connect the touchpad back by sliding it like this. You guys can see, I'll do it again in front of you. Just goes in like that, under and over looped around and boom, clips right in place. You wanna put this board back inside here. So this is what it should look like once you've connected it back. Again, that ribbon cable, that was a little bit of a pain and I ended up having to use a little pair of tweezers to pull that cable through this hole. But overall, you should be okay. I've got my board here. And if I turn this around, make sure you keep pressure on it because there's nothing holding it. This is what the front should look like at this point. So everything is fine. You can see that it still clicks. All the buttons are still clicking. That's the main thing we wanna make sure. That everything is tight. All right, let's proceed to the next step, which is to put this guy back on and then position the buttons with the back shell. So all we're doing is putting that black part back on and we're gonna screw this. That will just keep everything nice and secure and tight. This way you don't have to worry about dropping stuff or making sure that something's loose. Make sure this is nice and secure because what this is basically doing is keeping the buttons close to the actual touchpad or, well not the touchpad of the controller, but that film that you saw, which responds. So at this point, your controller buttons should be pretty tight. You shouldn't feel any kind of issues pressing the buttons, okay? All right, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step, we're gonna take this, we're gonna move it aside. And we're gonna bring out this guy, the original back plate, and the new one that we got here. And we're gonna swap everything from here and put it into this guy. So pretty simple task here. There's nothing actually hard with doing this. In fact, a lot of it just requires you pulling a whole bunch of stuff out. Oh, 
All right, so we're done with the old back shell. We'll move this aside. I'm gonna bring the new one in. We're gonna do the exact same thing in backwards order. We're gonna bring, kind of zoom out here a little bit. I'm gonna put this guy back on its spot just like that. And then last but not least, we will go ahead. Oh, actually, that guy went here. And this guy went here like this. Okay, so once you replace all the stuff, this is what the back shell should look like. Should be ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and connect this with the main board and get everything lined up. Just like that. Okay guys, in this step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the buttons on the board to the actual back plate that was included right here in their respective slots. We're also gonna use the little buttons that came with it. These are button covers. They're not all buttons entirely. And these are gonna hold those buttons in place. You're gonna screw them into the actual shell in these holes here, if you guys can see like the hole here, hole here, and stuff like that. Now, pay attention to the way I'm gonna do this because this is pretty specific in the way it's supposed to get installed. Okay, you guys can see that I went ahead and finished up. Now the main thing I want you guys to pay attention to or actually keep an eye on is the orientation of the wires. So you can see the red wire is actually on the outside on this button here and the gold or orange color ones are on the inside here. Same thing going for green and same thing for blue. They have to be flipped this way. So the blue wire should not come on this side. It should be on that side. That's the way it's supposed to be. I don't know why it'd be any difference, but I think it just has to do with the fitting of it. If you try and flip it, if you look at the board, I mean, it's not gonna make any electronical or electrical difference, but it's gonna make a difference in how it sits with it. So at this point, when you flip it upside down, this is what you should see. All the buttons should be there and you should be able to press them just with your thumb, like that. And you can see these ones are a little bit more engraved inside. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is we wanna make sure that this board sits flush with the back and that the actual little hole that you guys see here is made for the LED that's inside this. You see where it says LED? It's supposed to line up with this guy. So remember when I put this on, we're gonna have to take this back off so it sits flush. There's actually double-sided tape on that, which I did not account for. So we can just go ahead and peel this little double-sided tape off that aside and again you want to make sure that the LED light that's on here on the other side of this board lines up so let's go ahead and do that here's the double-sided tape I was telling you about again this is also 3m and this is gonna sit on the board here this hole right here is where this LED is gonna actually mount with and the reason is you're gonna to want to see the color of this while you're pairing the different buttons so it has to line up perfectly if you screw this up it's not that it's not gonna work but it's gonna be a little bit difficult for you to know what you're doing with pairing and the settings and whatnot so I'll show you how it looks once I attach it there again it's really hard to get in super detail and show you how I'm doing this without it covering up the entire camera so I apologize for the tutorial being a little bit you know expecting you guys to do some of this while I just explain it this is what it's supposed to look like once the LED is lined up next Thing you want to do is I peeled off the little foil that was on the back side of this tin this is actually a touch sensor so you want this to be on the bottom so that when you touch it it's going into programming mode all right now you can see I've placed the touch tin foil there that's probably the best view I can get for it it's really really thin and you got to be careful that you don't rip it they gave extra but it's gonna be a pain in the butt if you have to deal with all that again so that's what it should look like once it's set First things first, we wanna make sure we connect this ribbon cable here. I got the little ribbon cable in, as you guys can see here. And I would say the easiest way to get that is to lower this shell onto here and then just use a pair of tweezers and align it and push it in. Okay, once you close it up, make sure that you can actually see the LED inside there. I don't know if I can get the lighting to kind of look in here, but you should be able to see a little chip inside there. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but you'll see it when you see. If it's not lined up, you won't see anything. If it's lined up, you'll see a little reflection there. So we're gonna go ahead and put screws back in, tighten this guy down.
now we have all of our screws on here. All right, this is the last and the easiest step. All we gotta do is put the actual buttons like these onto here. So there's K1, it's on. It's pretty tactile. And that is how all these buttons should look. And that's about it guys, we just installed the back plate with its extra buttons. We are done. Let's go ahead and put this in pairing mode and set it up and I'll show you guys how we can actually use this now. All right guys, so that was pretty much the install tutorial. I know I tried to forward through a little bit of the things as much as I could and the reason for that is it's really, really small stuff that you're dealing with. I mean, these wires are almost hair thin. So you ha I had to be extra careful and make sure that I wasn't blocking stuff while trying to get the camera to position it correctly. But hopefully that was you know manageable for you guys. And if it wasn't, again, there's another tutorial online on it and inside the package you actually also get a very detailed diagram with step-by-step -step instructions on exactly what goes where and how to install it but the main things that I wanted you guys to pay attention to I call those out in the install so nothing should be problematic now if you remember that little copper tape thing that we installed on the bottom that's actually a touch button so you're supposed to hold your finger where that is and for a few seconds and that's going to actually put the controller into programming mode which means that you'll see a blue light on here stay solid and that means that now it's ready to map a button now you can only map one button to one trigger at a time that means that you can't set this to x and circle you can only set this to x so you can only set it to whatever you want if you want to program this so the first thing you want to do is turn on the system and obviously mine is paired with the playstation back there so it just turn it on but you can see there's no light glowing there. Now if I touch this for a few seconds, you should start to see a blue light come up after a few seconds. There you go. Now it's ready to pair. And pairing it is simple. You hold the button that you want to pair. So I want to pair the top button. Let's say I want to pair that with triangle. I'm going to press triangle and that hold it together for three seconds. It blinks three times, you let it go, and that's pretty much about it. Now, if you wanna delete a setting that's on there, you program the wrong button for whatever reason, you're just gonna do it the same way. So you're gonna hold it down, press the same button that you programmed it with, and it should flash three times, now it's erased. So right now I've set this to X, I've set this to circle. That's just what felt comfortable to me. I actually like that they tuck these in on the sides over here. It does make it a lot more comfortable when playing. And the touch button is nowhere near where, you know, where it's gonna do that. So be, make sure that you turn this off and you hold it for a few seconds before you actually play the game. There you go, it's popped off. And guys, that's pretty much about it. You now have a $250 scuff controller for only $35. That's right, this product is only 35 bucks. I've put links in the description below where you can go ahead and pick one up. They have a couple different colors. I happen to like the carbon fiber one the most. I just think that looks cleanest, it looks nice, looks bad, in a good way. <laughs> so overall, if you guys wanna go ahead and pick one up, you can visit the link in the description below, pick it up, it's only 35 bucks. It's a nice addition to anyone who wants to up their game when they're playing first person shooters. That doesn't mean you can't use this for other games. Obviously, you can map whatever button you want. I personally can't think of other games that you'd want to use a competitive edge type controller or tournament controller with. Again, mostly they're in first person shooter games, but there could be other games that you might like and you want to use this for. Anyways, 35 bucks definitely beats Scuff in price, no doubt. Again, you have to do some of the work yourself, which is why they're able to charge you a lot less for this product. So I personally, this is a five star, 10 out of 10 product for me, guys. I think this is awesome but then again that's the type of person i am i'm very comfortable opening up systems opening up controllers if you aren't that comfortable getting in and doing this kind of stuff and you know you you don't want to risk jeopardizing a 60 dollars dualshock 4 controller then this might not be the product for you you might want to spend the extra cash and pick up one that's already ready made but if you are comfortable doing stuff like this because it's simple and easy to follow then this should be a no-brainer guys pick one of these up and enjoy your game and up your game to the next level actually anyways that is pretty much the end of this video let me know what you guys thought and if you would actually purchase this product or not and what would be the best game that you think that this controller should be used for. Let me know in the comments section below. As always, I will see you guys on my next video and in the meantime, I'll be down there in the comments with you. So take care and have a good one. Peace out.